Suraj, uh, first of all, I'd just like to uh, thank you for joining me in today's conversation on behalf of Tongues on Fire and UK Asian Film Festival. Um, we were supposed to screen The Illegal at the festival, but obviously due to the pandemic, uh, we were unable to do so. But thankfully, uh, I, I got the opportunity to actually watch the film and interview Danish, and it's wonderful uh, to have you with us today. Thank you for having me. It's a real pleasure. Lovely. That's amazing. So, uh, in The Illegal, your character is sort of compelled to sort of sacrifice his passion and goal for financial survival. So what aspects of uh, this character personally stroke a chord with you? Well, it was actually quite a few things. Um, first of all, he's from Delhi. I'm from Delhi. He's a film student. I'm a film student. He wants to make movies and doesn't quite understand how exactly to go about that process, but has a, in his head thinks he has a lot to say and a lot he's seen. I felt like I, you know, felt that inside of me. I felt like that was something that I could give to that bit. Um, other than that, I feel like the situation he found himself in eventually, wherein he had to kind of give up his dreams in order to, one, uh, help his family, and two, uh, you know, survive, basically, um, put his dreams on hold. Um, luckily for me, I have been fortunate in my life to be able to do at least some of the things I wish to do. Um, mm. But I know quite a few people, both in India and uh, in New York, who have faced this problem. You know, I've, mm. I've seen uh, kind of dreams get you know, he wrote it away because of life itself. You know, sometimes it happens that way. Um, mm -hmm. Not to say that everybody gives up on their dreams. It's just that other things come in the way and you kind of have to deal with life as it, as it goes. So, yeah. um, so, so I've seen that, you know, in Delhi, I grew up with a lot of kids. Um, and some did things they wanted to do. Some weren't able to. Some gave up. Some didn't give up. Did other things and eventually got back to doing what they wanted to do. Mm. Um, and in New York, I live around Curry Hill. Um, oh, sorry. It's called Murray Hill, but the nickname for the area is called Curry Hill because there's a lot of Indian food over there. <laughs> um, so, uh, I've, I've, I've always been friendly with quite a few people over there who work in those restaurants and, um, right. you know, some of them aren't necessarily, uh, legally placed over there. So... Mm you know, I talked to them and this was before uh, the movie was going to be, a, before I knew this existed, hmm. you know, I'd spoken to them, I'd become friends with them. I just talked to them. And so in the movie, uh, when I read the script and when I, after speaking to Danish and trying to figure out, so basically every time there's a role, I try to uh, take things from my life, which kind of helped that situation. So I figured this is one of the things that obviously helped that situation. So then I spoke to them uh, from that angle, you know, I asked them questions like what it's like, what, what it's really like to like kind of have this relationship, even with your close family from so far away, you know, uh, wherein, you know, even it's, it's sometimes it's strange. One guy told me that, you know, I barely earn anything really it's it's tough to even say that i have a roof over my head but in india i keep a roof over theirs you know wow. um yeah you know it's it's very interesting to think like that it's that you yeah. know the the level of selflessness and uh you know the the courage required to do anything you know it's 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 crazy I, just yeah and then I'm, you know there's also the idea that you're following the american dream you know yes this this you know what i'm saying it's this idea. It's not a. It's not necessarily a reality. It becomes mm. a reality sometimes for some people, for the most part. You know, it's just a dream that ends up a dream. So there were it's all these things. It's interesting you say that because um even uh that whole idea of American dream it isn't your stereotypical uh way that we've seen previously in sort of Indo-American films as we've seen before. Like it's not like oh my God, America jana hai aur phir uh, bada aadmi banna hai. There's, there's no sort of, um, it's very realistic, that vision that uh, Hassan has. And I think that's what I really, really liked about it. I'm sure that's something that must have appealed to you as well, quite a bit. 100%. It wasn't like trying to fake anything. And, mm. you know, that's kudos to Danish because Danish has lived a very full life. 
Yeah. Um, you know, he, he's seen a lot of things in his life, you know. So he comes from his, his perspective on things is so, he has a very poetic mind, you know. Like he is, he must have even said the word dreamer, I'm assuming. But he is one, you know. He, he truly is. But with that, it's, he brings this, this, this reality to it. It's not some, you know. Yeah. up in the air kind of a thing it's very real it, this is these are the things that will happen and that's part of dreaming you know the, the tough bits so, so yeah that definitely that definitely encouraged me to do it and, and i know you kind of just mentioned this as well uh just now actually uh but what helped you to actually fully get into the skin of hassan oh some multitude of things um all these things that i just talked about i pulled from right Mm. Then me and Danish had quite a few conversations before we even started shooting anything in regards to how we're building this character and who this character should be. So at the end of the day, I feel like Hassan's kind of like a mix of these people I know, uh, mm. my perspective on things, and uh, basically looking through kind of what I've tried to make closest to uh, Danish's eyes, like through Danish's eyes, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know, we molded the character slowly. And then another big part of the whole thing was uh, who Hassan comes in contact with, who he talks to, and how they affect him. So, for example, the, the biggest example would be Babaji, you know? Yeah. Mm. Now, Babaji is someone who kind of, in a sense, sacrificed himself for others, you know, for his family. Uh, for his daughter, um, even for Hassan. So little by little, it's like he is a amalgamation of all these people. You know, a little bit of Khan comes through at this at a stage in the movie. Um, you know, when he gets aggravated and and, and yeah. stuff like that. Mm. And uh, so yeah, Jessica. So it's like everybody becomes a part of Hassan because he himself is. He's he's separated from what he knows and who he knows himself to be, and slowly changes. So as the movie progressed in terms of shooting it, we mm. just started picking up these things and using these things, and so finally, it's, that is incredible. I mean, I just I think I just love the fact that it's very it's realistic, it's gritty, but yet it's just so beautifully done. It's just so visually aesthetically done, and I just love the way the cinematography, the editing, Danish's vision. I Honestly, I think it was so well executed, and I think kudos goes to you guys uh, for that. Uh, in fact, it's quite special as well because um, uh, you reunite with Adil Hussein after a few years uh, on the big screen, and you've done quite a few films with him as well. So, working with actors you've previously collaborated with before, it must really enhance the sort of comfort level on set. Oh yeah, hundred um, percent. Yes, the more you work with someone, the more they understand you, the more you understand them, the more uh, the more you're like kind of allowed to experiment with things, you know, experiment with moments, play with scenes, see things or find things that you wouldn't have. There's one thing when you read something, you know, it, there's this idea that's formed in your head. Yes, Ajay, God, this is going to be like this. You know? mm. Then when you take it on set or when you speak it, it changes, right? Then when you're speaking it or saying it, it changes in front of the director again, you know, because his vision comes into it. But then with the actor, you know, at the end of the day, you are basically, everybody just is, all they're doing is reacting to something. If it's the script, if it's the director, if it's the actor, you're opposite, if it's the camera and the angle and the lighting. It's all, your, all your job is, is, is just reacting to things. So sure. when you know someone, or you've worked with someone before, you know, you can really play around a lot. Unfortunately, me and Adil didn't have enough scenes mm. in which we were performing off of each other. Um, but yeah, that, that, is, that is very true. And I think it can also be right to say that um, you really have graduated as an actor in this film. I feel like you've always been great, uh, you know, as a performer. But I think just seeing you uh, in this film, it just... I don't know, it, it, this is something just stroke a chord inside of me. And I was like, wow, I mean, Suraj has come such a long way. I mean, I mean, having look, watched the film back, I'm not sure if you have or, um, or not, but looking back at that experience and obviously from where you first began, do you feel that, okay, 
this is this is probably one of the zenith performances of my career. Yeah, I did feel like uh, there wasn't a point when I lied, when I felt like I lied in this in this in this one. Oh, really? Which is which is, yeah. I you know what I mean is. In every project you do, there are scenes that uh, come through easily. There are scenes that come through in a tough way, and then there are scenes in every film that you feel like, nah, it, that just didn't work. On set, you feel, you know when it's like that, you know? Um, with this movie, because of the, 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 the actors I was working with, because of the DOP, because of actually the whole crew is so, you know, this movie was one wherein um, there was no, uh, there was no... Uh, Expectations? No, not expectations. There was no um. How do you? Say, there was no facade of anything. Right. You know? Yeah. And there and there was absolutely nobody there who wasn't doing that simply for the love of the script and the craft, whatever that craft might be. Right. Mm -hmm. That really pushes you forward because one, you have no time because you have not much money, so you are going to give everything as quickly as you can. And then we had you suppose you're doing a movie, right? You get like five, six takes. Mm. You know, usually in mm. this we had two takes most of the time three sometimes mm. so what that does it makes you give everything right off the bat there's no time for like you know so in doing all that and with Danish's guidance I felt like yeah in this in this movie I didn't have to I didn't feel that moment where nah it didn't work kind of feeling so I'm happy about that I, I feel like you know there's a <laughs> a long way to go uh, but but this this is better. Yeah. yeah, it's a long way to go, but I think you've definitely reached that middle ground. And I think that's that's a great sort of progress to sort of make as well. And I think even working on independent films as well, like The Illegal as well, like I think the working style must be very different to, let's say, for example, how um, Life of Pi was. I mean, I know you've done a lot of films since then, of course. Um, so obviously, I'm sure there must that the whole working ethics and the whole style must be completely different too, right? Yeah, um, definitely. I feel like, well, first of all, you know, it goes without saying that every project you're working on is going to be different. But yes, independent film is fun. It's, uh, it's, it's all nail biting. It's all, um, it's very blood, sweat, and tears. You know, it's not like money. Mm. It's not like you're getting paid or this is a, this is a job you have to do. Not that I find myself ever in that kind of a situation, but. Uh, you know that is a thing sure. so the one similarity between this one and pi was you know getting things done was very felt sometimes quite um, miraculous it felt like okay you know this how are we going to get this done we we don't have time sometimes danish and i and um a bunch of others we were like write part writing you know dialogue the two minutes, five minutes before we were going to shoot it kind of a situation, you know? Mm. There were those moments. So it's very like, oh man, let's, we got to do this. We got to get this done very in the moment, uh, you know? Mm. Um, but yes, lots of learning. Um, you know, mm. you, you learn the, the importance of prep. You, you really start to realize that collaboration is key, is the most important thing. Mm. Um, stuff like that. So yeah, it's been, it was a learning experience. It was new. It was good. Mm, indeed it definitely uh, seems like it as well uh, so I spoke with Danish before and um, I believe he did mention that the team is planning to sort of lock a digital release uh, for the illegal so I mean how do you think independent movies like this can benefit from uh, OTT exposures I feel like it's it is it is the most beneficial thing to be seen <laughs> you know it's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's extremely important because um, at the end of the day, you're you're making this for others, you know. And with stories like, see, independent film usually falls in the category that this might film be. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, what? A film festival film. Normally, that's what they sort of bracket them as, you know, often. Well, yeah, but an independent film usually also is something that is tends to be worth saying or worth seeing because it's trying to say something, you know, it's mm -hmm. trying to say something 
and it's taken a lot of effort for people to get that said. Very often, independent film uh, strikes a chord with people who want change. That just happens to be a deciding that independent film, good independent film, strives for. Mm -hmm. And it's extremely important for people to realize and see that this is this is this exists you know and these people exist and this story exists and so it's really important for them to see it and i also think that independent film is where young talent is nurtured you know hmm. young talent needs to be seen because uh, if uh, if anything in life doesn't evolve with the times then uh, it stagnates the whole whole thing itself like for example cinema independent film is the key to cinema because Everybody who's going to make movies later is making movies right now in the independent world. Mm. Yeah. Indeed. In fact, many, many of the great talents we see, you know, not just in, in Hollywood, but of course in Bollywood too, in particular, in Hindi cinema, a lot of them have started off as uh, independent artists and now they're sort of making it big on the more mainstream front. But I think also... Um, I feel like we as a society have such a habit of just bracketing types of cinema as well. So even when I ask a question like, uh, you know, for example, um, independent cinema and stuff like that, I mean, don't you think it's about time that we sort of shatter these brackets? I mean, how, how do you think we can go about doing that? See, I don't think, oh, this is a very philosophical question. <laughs> I don't think, um, I don't think categories can be avoided in my opinion. Um, mm. Humans by nature are always going to categorize things. But uh, what we can do is uh, make more categories seem available, make more categories seem uh, plausible in any sense. It's like, okay, it's an independent film. It's, I'm not going to watch it. You know, that idea needs to change. Just like, nobody else is watching this. What is, you know, what's the point? Kind of. Huh. That stuff needs to change. That's where the change needs to be. I think, see, uh, to a degree, the audience's taste is mandated by what they watch. Wow. Yeah. So, if what they watch changes, then what's good also changes. Mm. And that's why independent film is is so important because that's where you know, the taste making happens. Hmm. So I think that, I mean, that's key. That's the most important. Yeah, let's take India, for example, right hmm. now, India is a very important and interesting place in, for cinema because one, you know, it's one of the biggest industries there, are. but two, and more importantly, most of India watches media on mobile devices phones for example right mm -hmm. what that means is that you know streaming services have a huge upper hand in india and web series and stuff like that right mm -hmm. because most people are genuinely watching things on their phone so now that means that streaming is then the most watched uh, stuff so therefore if independent film can push that barrier, move into that streaming world in large, in large masses, you know, yeah. then, then things can really work out. For sure. For sure. I think that is, I think that's such a wonderfully uh, explained answer to a rather philosophical question as uh, you put it. I think that's a, uh, I think it's so true. And I think I'm really glad it's great to see this digital revolution happening. I mean, had it not been for um, streaming platforms, I think lockdown would have been almost like going back to the medieval times where you would be sitting in front of a campfire and sort of telling stories. I mean, that would probably would have been fun anyway, but it's almost been like a savior, hasn't it? Uh, you know, for us at this moment in time. Yeah, I feel like, you know, what is, uh, why do humans love storytelling? Because storytelling teaches them things and helps them avoid. It's mm -hmm. a weird mix of teaching them things about their lives and avoiding their own problems, you know. Um, so in times like these, when, uh, you know, everybody's kind of just in place, they have to stay wherever they are and don't have much to do, you know, uh, it's a, it's a boon. It's a blessing. Sure. No, I, it really, really is. But I think speaking more about yourself, Suraj, um, you've been among the few initial actors who have successfully ventured onto the international and 
uh, American space in cinema uh, from India. Um, obviously, we had, uh, you know, we've had obviously Frida Pinto, we've had uh, Irfan Khan sir, of course, the late Irfan Khan sir, Priyanka Chopra, of course. Um, so what is your view on uh, the representations of uh, BAME characters in the West in particular? Well, quite simply, I think it needs to change and it is changing. Um, so it's uh, all I can see, all I can say is that what I hope for is essentially that me, I can play, I'm allowed to play any character I wish to as long as I'm good enough and as long as uh, I have a good rapport with uh, the people involved. Right. When the case becomes that, we're in a very, 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 very good place. But we're not there yet. You know, right now, I'm only allowed to play certain types of characters on the most part. Right? Mm -hmm. And it's our own. It's as, and I'm talking about all, uh, you know, POCs, like, you know, we everybody is basically remember how earlier you were talking about categories that's the problem right yeah. here again you know there are categories and people find it tough to look at people outside of the boxes that they've created in their own minds in the collective social mind right hmm. so for indians right now it's like that it's tough to break through very very tough to make someone believe that this person could be something other than you know, a uh, assortment of uh, yeah. roles that we've all seen. So, yeah, that takes time. But the most important thing, most, uh, the biggest thing, biggest uh, thing that can help that change is us creating more things, more media, you know, us creating our own representation. Mm -hmm. um, yes. You know, and that, yeah. And that's a slow process, but it's a process and it, and that means it can be done. So, yeah, you know, slowly definitely. over time. I mean, even having like faces like um, uh, Lily Singh, of course, uh, Mindy Kaling as well, uh, Never Have I Ever as well, like uh, having ventures like that, I guess that's sort of a positive step towards change. But I think my, my question is though, um, is it a bit, like, don't you think it's a little bit slow? Um, I mean, by now, obviously, because so many changes have happened, we've become so aware as a society. Don't you think that this change is still relatively slow? And don't you think it could have kind of picked up pace? I think, see, idealistic, my idealistic point of view says, yes, it's, it's very, very slow. It should, it should be, it should have changed. It, this should be different by now, you know. But here's something to think about. It takes a while to, in any kind of sector, to climb a ladder to get the point where, to get to the point where you are a decision maker. Yeah. It, ta it takes a bit. Now, for one to be able to allow to be climbing the ladder where they, or the ladder, ladder of decision making, okay, first, society needs to understand or validate the fact that, yes, this person is capable of climbing this ladder. Mm. At this point, we've come to the point where a few people have been, here's the thing, you've got to have a few people in places of power before you can have more people come into that place of power from a place of, I want to change this, you know? Mm. So right now, I think it's not surprising that it's slow. Um, uh, but I think it's very, 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 very good that it is changing. You know, that's, that's mm. the most important thing. Right now, if we were to just talk about America, America is going through a lot of, uh, you know, Questions of identity. That's what it really is. Yes. Um, and where questions of identity come for oneself, there's also this opening where you can have conversations about the identity of others, you know. Mm. So that's great. That's great. Because yeah. that puts everything in this place where, you know, these people can do this. This can be made. These people don't all act this way. You know, uh, yeah. my understanding of how this person is is not what what I thought it was. Mm. And if one, uh, you know, uh, I don't want to say minority. I want to, if one, if one 
community group of community community hmm. can uh, can break through the uh, you know the barriers the chains then with it whether it likes it or not or is trying to do that or not it pulls everybody up hmm. so so this is great i think it's it's amazing i think if i'm in a place right now where i can uh, confidently say if i really really push myself and try and use everybody that i have met and just give it my best i can make movies uh about anybody wow in uh, america yeah you know i couldn't have said that like how many not even very many years ago you know, yes that's big that's big i mean look so at, i'm I mean, yeah m night shamalan is a testament to that as well you know i mean the yeah. way he's made his movies as well uh, relating to yeah. the ordinary common person in america i think is fantastic as well so i think it's true there's always scope for that but also perhaps the fact that there's blind casting nowadays in films like the personal history of david copperfield perhaps that could also uh help pave a clearer path of equal opportunities too surely 100% that's 100% 100% see the many people get frustrated and to be honest bit, a bit of me also get fr- gets frustrated it's it's a dual, it's a dualistic thing it's um a bit of me gets frustrated about um ideas like um what is that word um what were i looking for um, it's like uh it's like token casting okay it's like okay we we need we need some amount of melanin in this movie so therefore we still cast this person right that pisses me off it makes me very angry but uh, because it's not fair this should be a based on quality you know mm-hmm. based on your ability your skill your craft your ideas your uh, uh, way to communicate with others and whether you mesh whether those ideas mesh that should be what makes those decisions but simultaneously i understand that token casting is very important because if the audience starts seeing things slightly differently even slightly then it it opens uh, room for change you know opens room in their heads to see this person as something that they wouldn't have assumed possible before mm. so you know those are the things those are the little things that will make this uh, make this possible i think sure sure and i think definitely and i'm really really glad uh, that you sort of mentioned that as well because i think it's very important especially for viewers to kind of understand as well i think it's it's great to sort of hear your perspective and your take on that uh a couple of years ago it was wonderful to see you in philori uh i think that was i believe your first um like hindi speaking roles uh why have we not seen more bollywood films from you so basically after philori i got busy quite busy uh, doing uh, uh first i did uh, you know the illegal and uh, after that i was doing a tv show for two years so that really mm-hmm. kept me occupied you don't have any time to do basically anything else um so i was doing god friend me a cbs uh, tv show so that just kept me occupied there was no space or time to do anything mm-hmm. secondly i'm always trying to do things uh for me in my head uh i'm not trying to say you know many people ask the bollywood hollywood question and yeah you know, stuff like that for me i don't think that matters as much mm. i will do whatever i does not matter as long as the script is good and my ideas are meshing with the ideas of the of the people working on it and 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 and, and there's a collaborative vibe if those mm. things exist it, how does it it does not matter it does not change anything it makes me just want to do it you know yeah so hmm. it's been tough to find that in uh, bollywood over the past 3 years for me because one i've been super super busy and so what i could have done i was not able to because i was busy um and yeah so basically i'm open to it as long as it happens it comes across you know in a positive way like right now and for the first time i'm like not working on a project for for a while you know hmm. so uh, right now as much as i'd like to be reading you know i do i am reading scripts and stuff and talking to people about future projects but it's all up in the air like nobody knows when they're going to shoot where they're going to shoot how they're going to shoot and stuff like that so hmm. bollywood's definitely open i mean it's not like i'm yeah. uh, you know 
दरवाजे तो कभी दरवाजे सारे खुले हैं इस घर में कोई दरवाजे नहीं है उसके is it, that makes me feel like okay this this bits being pushed for whatever reason it's outside of the story um that's the most important thing secondly obviously i try to find something i connect to actually that's not true because if i can't find anything that i can connect to then it's that disconnect that starts uh, to make me uh, intrigued you know right. what is it about this person that i just can't find in me uh so maybe that's not true but the, the with with a story that's honest often times um you know you'll find that you're intrigued and curious about what's going to happen with this person so honesty um um telling something that is uh, of importance that that matters to to society or to change mm-hmm. that's always very important and uh, something i haven't done something that makes me feel challenged like okay here we go again back to ground zero no nothing and uh, try to learn everything kind of a vibe so mm. uh, in a script those are uh, the key things you know mm. honesty and, and the challenge of it, it it's key but then also that that the, what's important is the people you know their understanding of the story their you know whatever they are willing to tell me about their lives and you know uh, the rapport that is created you know mm. the collaborative spirit so those are the things i look for sure sure um and obviously we spoke about the digital revolution being a big boon to us uh, especially during this pandemic but besides that what do you think uh, will be the greatest change in cinema post uh, the covid-19 outbreak well first of all my hope is that people are more courageous you know they realize that one that uh, people don't have as much time as they assume and uh, people can do a lot more with their time than they assume and um, you know whether you like it or not or if you're trying to or not i'm pretty sure the covid thing has made people quite introspective to a degree uh, you know what are you going to do except think about what have you done in your life or what are you going to do and what if you're a bath then what are you filled with and where are you going to pour that you know? mm-hmm. so i think if my hope is that it it makes the industry courageous it makes it risk taking it 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 makes it more uh truth telling it it makes it more honest to itself if that's the case as opposed to acha this usually makes this much money so let's go and put this much money in it and get this much money back you know cuz uh sure that's fun but uh, it's not as fun you know? no no yeah, yeah. and i think yeah. also um there must be a lot of pressure on filmmakers producers distributors as well because uh, the fact that there's going to be a lot of fear amongst the public to go to the cinema because of the whole social distancing rules and uh, you know the health and safety regulations and all of that so i guess there's obviously a lot more pressure as well on uh, making a more solid product uh, for audiences to enjoy and make them come to the cinema too yeah 100% agree i feel like over the past you know 10 15 years uh the audience has been moving away from theaters everybody knows mm. and that's why big films are bigger and regular films are few and far between more so than before you know people moving away from theater and something like covid uh just enforces that you know people are now even more used to watching things on smaller screens in more convenient ways um so yeah one that should push the idea that quality really truly does matter mm. and two i think it also puts a bit of a reset button on at least my i think it does i mean i don't know if this is true but a more of a reset button on uh people's taste 
what people are willing or to watch you know what happens is like sure okay so in normal life acha bhai teen movie you know uh, there these three movies out they're big you know all my friends watch them or watch them great you know mm. right now there's nothing like that so what are you going to do you start like uh, you know going through the catalogs being like yes. now what do i like what am i actually what do i like mm. you know you start going through stuff you watch this that you're like acha ye to kabhi pehle i didn't you know as you know i wouldn't have liked this but uh. this is very interesting you know actually and i let me let me see a few more like this yes you recommend them for me thank you you click 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 watch 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 wow wonderful you know what i never thought i'd like this but this is good <laughs> this is, you know yeah <laughs> but what is that that's taste changing you know that yeah. and what also that is is that's independent film usually making strides yes and what does that mean that means a bigger chance of us to change the industry grow as it should evolve as it should regardless of theater or whether the, the big theater survive or not that pushes us to make things that are new different and challenging the system uh, because people you know begin to realize that maybe they like things other than you know a franchise a and franchise b so that's great yes definitely i think it's wonderful to see an increasing appetite for uh, different types of cinema as well i think yeah, exactly. lockdown uh, that's all happening as well um but also on a final note suraj um i think uh, this unprecedented time has uh, been a big teacher to all of us uh, i think it's taught us quite a few things what in particular has been uh, the major learning point for you and how do you hope to interpret that as a person as an artist in the future uh with regards uh, to covid right yes mhm well as much as covid's been quite you know awful to the world and a very sad thing you know it's uh, again it's like one of those things where you can make something out of it so for me um you know i'm a lot more healthier now uh i've started cooking tremendous amounts like Uh, you know a lot of people say i can cook now but I, and i'm one of them like i can cook now it's pretty surprising and exciting um uh, you know i started making workout routines uh exercising properly realizing what i was doing and what i was doing what i can do um i started making music i started making beats i started writing songs uh, i started writing script uh it so it's been good to me i started practicing yoga which i hadn't done in like eight years um so what else that's it right yeah that's about it. yeah and you know i started watching like uh, you know like master class and stuff like that to learn about things that i might not know anything about and i might not need to know anything about but when you do you you, you it's like telling stories you know the more stories you listen to the more you learn about life so uh, yeah. like kind of that vibe wow. so been good i mean you know it's not been a waste of time no definitely and i yeah, think yeah. it's it's so great uh to sort of hear this as well suraj and i think um you're an inspiration to a lot of uh talents out there and i think uh, it's just so wonderful to see you do so well uh in the field of cinema especially on the international front um i think a film like the illegal is very special and i can't wait uh till uh the film releases on OTT uh has there been any updates yet on that or is it still under um uh wraps it's it's under wraps it's in the process hopefully it goes through works out we'll see yeah fingers <laughs> Thanks. crossed fingers crossed but anyway <laughs> uh thank you so much suraj for joining uh tongues on fire and education film festival for today's in conversation mm-hmm. thank you thank you so much that was that was really fun that was a good conversation thank you. i really enjoyed it too thank you so much thank you Take care, dude. Talk to you soon. Yes, for sure.